Right, so this week someone's asked me to make a thing to stop them hurting themselves when they're using this. This is a ground auger and it gets really heavy once it's in the ground. Um, and so lifting it out, lifting it out uh, makes your back hurt quite a lot. And so there's images online of one of these with a wheel, a bit like a wheelbarrow. Um, I'll put an image somewhere here. And so I've bought a load of bits and we're going to try and make one. Okay, so we're going to start designing the metal frame that holds the wheel as a starting point, start at the front. And so what I've done is I've drawn around the wheel and then made sure that like the, the bushes are taken into consideration how far. So the rectangle, this hatched rectangle, is roughly the size of the wheel if you just looked at it from straight down. And so we need a bar to go around that to support the axle and to guard the front against hitting into too many things. Although we are using a puncture proof tire. So what we've done is I've drawn a rough where I want the bar and then these circles here, 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 and we'll probably put one here as well. And once we make the bar, the tube hot in the forge here, we're going to try and bend it around here and to do that we're going to weld little stumps of metal onto the workbench and that will give us a thing to bend around. Spider's too warm, spiders are dropping out of the ceiling. So So they ended up fairly similar, one's bent a little bit further than the other one and a bit smoother but that's what you get for doing the second one. Uh, but they're both similar enough that when you turn them over they're going to form that nice U shape that would have been really hard to get without a spring inside the tube to stop it bending all the way and this time the tube would probably struggle to do that 
diameter bend anyway. So we're going to cut it here ish with a grinder and then we'll weld the two back together. So none of this is welded up but it's all kind of freestanding so we've got the sides ready to weld on and we've got the point which is pretty close to the middle of the thing. There's a bit gappy here, a bit of a weird thing to cut um, but we'll fill that with weld and it won't be a problem. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to weld this and we're going to weld this into place. So, got the back brace on, got the axle holder bit on and joined the front together. So we've now got all the bits needed in for the wheel. Um, we now need to start working on the rest of it to hold this thing over here. Okay, so the next bit, we need to separate these bars enough so that when there's a pivot here, this point is down at the level of these bars, so that the whole thing can pivot up and out the way of the ground when you're wheeling it along. And so to do that, we're going to take a block of wood, set it to the right distance, or a distance, and wedge it between the two bars and just hit it along and as the tension becomes so much that I can't move the bar, I'll heat the point at where I want it to bend a bit more. And that way I should be able to get a fairly even bend. So I made this little bit here, uh, solid bar, and then it's got these little sleeves on it. We're going to weld the bar on now, um, and these little sleeves will allow us to use it as a hinge, so that when we put the auger on, it's got a nice big plate to attach to, but uh, it's a nice solid hinge as well. This is going to be our base plate for the motor to mount onto. Right, so here's the plate we cut out, and the motor is going to mount on it somewhere about there, I reckon. Uh, but we need to cut a hole in the bottom for the shaft. So we're gonna use one of the greasy marks that it's leaving on here. And then we're gonna weld it on. Weld it on, no, not weld it on. We're gonna drill a hole. Thank <laughs> you. 
So to stop this moving backwards and forwards along this pole, and therefore the motor not swinging properly, I've made this piece of metal with curved ends, and it's going to sit in here, and we're going to weld it to this this bar, and it has got a little tiny bit of play in it, so it doesn't jam up, but ultimately, with that welded there, the motor won't be able to slide backwards and forwards along the the shaft, keeping it in place. So I bent it, bent there, this bit, and that lets it tip up most of the way. It's the ha the old handlebars are still connecting here, and so the height from the pivot to this is 11 in, from the pivot to here is 11 inches, which comes to about here. So it only actually needs to clear at this point. So I think I'm going to put a bend in here, coming out and then we'll bend it again going that way and that way we'll bring the bars back parallel and that way it should be able to tip up all of the way and then we can put stops on so that it doesn't tip too far or too little but it at least gives that option without wrecking the handlebars hitting this all the time. So I've cut these bits there down and out and now this, this is a little bit, it, it probably won't go this Far, but we might do. We'll see. But that goes all the way down there now, it misses. And so, with this here, these are really too far out now, so we need to bend at this point where it misses these so that they come parallel again. Right, so I got these made, heated and bent, and then these are going to go in here. So these are going to go in here like this. This goes in here, and then it's just going to sit there, and we're going to weld here and around here.
so we're all done. Uh, I realise I've skipped a bit where I moved this handle from the pole on the left there onto here. Uh, but I went through several different iterations of trying not to move the handle. And in the end, had to make a new control cable that was long enough to move the original handle to here. Um, but there might be a few examples of what I tried to do around the screen very briefly. But let's say it was a painful experience. So for now, we've moved the whole the whole control unit, uh, which makes it less. It makes it a bit more difficult to move the motor off the wheelbarrow. It's a bit more of a permanent fixture now than I was intending. So if you like this sort of thing and you want to see me make and repair more random things then please remember to subscribe to the channel and I will see you next time.